you know, someone who has not been getting ring endorsements lately from us, and he's really trying to get our attention, is uh, Road Dog. Um, did you want to talk <laughs> any more about that, or do you just well, want to kind of let it die? Well, I, uh, you know, I told you I didn't want to really speak on Road Dog anymore. You did um, because I, I, I think he understands. I, I know he knows uh, where I'm coming from. And, and he kind of, you know, talks in circles a bit because he, you know, he, he says things, but then he contradicts himself with other things he says. Um, and, you know, uh, immediately when he met me, he judged me. Right? right. And that judgment hasn't left him, even though um, I've done OK in my career. And also, even though, you know, a lot of people have uh, even uh, yeah, a lot of people have a. um a positive perception of me. He still has kept that judgment, which is, you know, ass backwards to me. But, uh, you know, I listened to this 15 minute tirade that he had to say about me and I, I just want to let it go, but I, I don't want to talk about him anymore. Um, I'm here. Let bygones be bygones. I just wanted to get my story out there because, uh, you know, it, everyone can have their own perception, but now I have this platform. Thanks to you. Thanks to Connor. Thanks to everyone that I can tell my story, at least part of my story. Right. Right. And, you know, for him to say that, and I'm going to get myself really worked up and I'm going to try not to, but for him to say, uh, that if I came to the back and I was so angry that I cried and punched the wall, then I need to get my priorities straight. No, uh, I think I'm the last person in this wrestling world that needs to get their priorities straight because my priorities, and I've said it a million times, Matt, God, my wife, and my daughter. And I think if there's one professional wrestler <clears throat> that you can look at and say, he said his priorities, he's got his priorities, right? It would be me. That's what I've always said. And above everything, it's those three. Um, I was upset because I'm so passionate about wrestling. And yes, I do take, like he said, I do take wrestling very seriously, almost too seriously. I, I completely understand that, but I take it so seriously because I haven't had the easiest, um, uh, uh, the easiest upbringing in wrestling. I wasn't able to get into wrestling because of a name. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't able to get into wrestling and get behind the two biggest, uh, icons in professional wrestling history and ride their coattails to the top, you know, because the attitude era got the, not, not just him, not just him. So I don't want that to be the headline, but the attitude era had the privilege of stone cold, Steve Austin and the rock. You know what I'm saying? They had that privilege, these sure. two hot commodities. So everything was over and you were making, everyone was making a ton of money. Me at five foot 10 Southerner, uh, not the best looking guy in the world, not the best body in the world. Um, but, but I made it, you know what I'm saying? I made it. There's a reason that I made it. And, uh, for him to say that my priorities are wrong, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. And I do take it very seriously because if I don't take it seriously with the stature that I am and, and, and what I have to offer, then I'll just fall to the wayside and, and I'll just be another guy in the crowd. And I don't want that. I never want that uh, because ultimately the bigger star you are, the more money you can make and the more money I can give to my wife and daughter to take care of themselves. So I apologize, I guess, for being slightly upset that we were put out there in a two minute match to get beat clean and then to follow up to get beat by all these guys who weren't going to be on tv the very next week we were and there was no follow-up plan for us and i know there was no follow-up plan because me and dan went and talked to hunter and he said i really don't think there's anything next week for you guys i'm not sure though you can talk to vince so of course i'm going to be upset because that's affecting my bottom dollar you know so uh to say that i have my priorities not right uh that kind of bothered me but above that, because I don't put anything past Road Dog anymore, um, above that is your buddy, uh, Cassio Kid. He decided to chime in because he was behind a keyboard, of course, on his Twitter. And he had a little something to say. Uh, and that, you know, he said, I hope, uh, you know, Emporium or whatever, uh, I hope that Road Dog shook their hand afterwards. Uh, I think Cassio may be barking up the wrong tree. And I think that he's messing with the wrong person uh, because. I've never met the guy before and there's no reason for him because he doesn't know the story, but there's no reason for him to be able to offer um, his, uh, his thoughts on my situation and to be a little smart ass like that. So that kind of bothered well, me a little I, bit too. I got to tell you, you know, Cassio is, is my buddy. I count my close friends on one hand and he's 
one of them. And what you think might be like a cheap shot or whatever, Cassio doesn't really take cheap shots. Like, I, do, I get that. And that's fine that he's your friend. I there, don't mind. Yeah. Go ahead. There's, yeah, go ahead. There's, there's, there's nobody who's met Cassio that doesn't love him like and like him. And I, I think it's more like this, you know, and, uh, you know, and when you meet him, hopefully you'll feel the same. But he's kind of like me in the sense if if I'm with you, I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? And so I think he's with Road Dog. You know what I'm saying? Like that's I'm, his his partner, his business partner, his podcast partner. I'm not sure what the intent was when that tweet, but no, I was, think you know. I think yeah. you know the intent, and I and I, I respect you and commend you for trying to take up your friend. And that's totally cool that he is a hundred percent with Road Dog. But just because he's with Road Dog doesn't mean he's allowed to take pot shots at me. That's so that's you, my opinion. So you took it. Well, I guess you would. I mean that that is. That is the intent of it, and and you know I think, you know you're trying to promote a podcast, you're trying to do all these things, and I think maybe that was just a miss by him, and and he doesn't miss often. Like uh, when you look at he's Conrad's best friend from a long time ago because Conrad's wealthy, and Conrad has a lot of people that that um, take advantage of him or try to take advantage of him, and Cassie was the one guy that he can trust. And, you know, he was just paired with Road Dog. Like, I'm not, I don't think he pursued it. I think he was ready to podcast. He's a great podcaster, but he's a great guy. Like, this is a guy like, uh, we've gone to aquariums together. You know what I'm I saying? Think, like, I he, think you, uh, I think you and I could just agree to disagree and let's move on. Right, just let Cassio right. know that uh, hopefully we don't come face to face. And if we do, then hopefully he and I can have a tequila and squash this and uh, maybe underneath the table we can bury road dog a little bit i i guarantee you guys will be drinking and laughing in five minutes but i understand where you're coming from and i'm not disrespecting it um but at the same time you know he, he's he's a he's a good person to me and, and a good friend of mine 